In this next lesson, we're going to start to get into some of the installation best practices. One of the things that most people don't understand is the turbine meter theory, actually how a turbine meter is designed to operate, right? What the turbine meter theory is, is this. When you're looking at the design of a turbine element, this is an inferential meter, right? It's inferring a velocity into a volume, okay? In order for that to work correctly, the engineer that designs this is assuming that I have an ideal velocity profile. What do I mean by that? It means that I have a fully established turbulent flow. Okay, now this, this slide, we really show two different pipes here, and I'm going to show two different velocity profiles. The first one that I'm going to talk about is what we call, again, fully established turbulent flow. This is the ideal type of flow for a turbine meter to operate correctly. And what it means is that I have a relatively steady velocity across the pipe section. Okay. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in a second. The average velocity is somewhat flat. It's not skewed, right? And the turbine elements need this kind of swirl free, uniform, turbulent velocity profile in order to infer the correct volume from this velocity. So let's take a look at the pipe. If this is my pipe cross section, right, and I'm analyzing the water as it flows, in this case, from left to right, this velocity profile shows that near the pipe walls, you're naturally going to have a slowdown of the velocity. So you see there's a little taper there, but the wall of the water front as it goes down the pipe is relatively steady. There's a little bit of a change in velocity, but it's relatively flat relatively steady, it's going to approach the turbine element in this flat manner. Okay, let's take a look at the converse to that. The converse to that is laminar flow. In the case of laminar flow, this is where I have the velocity that's very erratic. Okay, it's not the same across the pipe section. So it looks something like this. That velocity is skewed. In this case, what I'm showing here is that the center of the pipe is actually moving faster. The velocity is higher near the center than it is towards the top and towards the bottom, right? I've got this almost a, a hyperbole shape going on here. This is not what we want. In this case, the turbine element doesn't really understand what it's supposed to do here. I've got this overspeeding towards the middle of the pipe, and then I've got this slowing of velocity near the, the top and bottom, right? That's not going to infer the correct velocity. Let's take a look at some applications. We want this ideal velocity profile, but there are particular instances that will cause a disturbance to that velocity profile. Okay, so the picture we looked at before, that velocity was very uh, uniform across the front. In this case, this is what I would characterize as a low disturbance, right? Maybe an elbow or a T or a Y in front of the line could cause this skewing of the velocity profile. The top portion of this, in this case, probably the top two thirds of it, the velocity is the same. But as you get towards the bottom, right, of the pipe, it's a slowing of velocity, right? That velocity is much slower there than it is towards that top two thirds of the pipe. That's a low disturbance. In the case of a medium disturbance, things like a combination of elbows and series, or maybe an eccentric reducer right in front of the element could cause a velocity profile like this, or maybe a medium disturbance. In this case, about the top half of this pipe is moving steady, right? That's about the same velocity, but then you get this slow degradation of velocity as it moves towards the bottom of the pipe. Now, it's not always on the bottom or you know always on top. It doesn't look like this. I'm just showing you an example of a medium type disturbance, right? This velocity profile could look a number of ways. This is just an example. In the case of a high disturbance, every manufacturer will say to you, never put a pump or a throttle valve or in trained air before the meter. They're saying that because it's going to highly disturb the velocity profile. I'm going to have something that could look like this. You know, at the top of this pipe, it's, it's moving very fast. The bottom of the pipe, the bottom probably uh, three quarters of the pipe, moving very slow, very erratic. That's not what we want in order for a turbine element to properly infer the correct volume of water. Three examples that I want to go over here to show you what they can cause when you have an installation that's not done correctly. In this case, let's say I've got an elbow in front of the meter. 
All manufacturers give you the amount of straight pipe that they want before the, the turbine element. And the reason they do this is because the straight pipe in front of the turbine element will straighten out that velocity profile. Having this elbow right before the meter is going to give us a skew in velocity. Now what's going to happen here is this rotor is going to start to be pushed sort of in an odd way. And we'll look at that closer here in a second. The thing that I also want you to understand is this can have a potential effect on the accuracy of the meter. This might disturb that accuracy plus or minus one and a half percent. That's revenue, right? It could also disturb the, the life of the meter because you're, you're prematurely going to wear out this element because it doesn't have this ideal velocity profile as it approaches it, right? It's a floating rotor in most cases, and it can be cockeyed by this skewed velocity profile. If we take a closer look at this, this is what's happening. You see the, the turbine rotor on the right-hand side. I apologize for the drawing. It's not a great drawing, but the left-hand side shows you that velocity profile. And think about what you see here. Towards the top quarter of the pipe, you actually have a reversing of flow. You have an eddy current effect here, right? The inside of that elbow is causing this eddy current, meaning that as it approaches the turbine element, it's almost trying to make that turbine blade go in reverse. In this case, the bottom two thirds of this is overspeeding. You almost get the effect of putting your finger over a, a water hose, right? You get that jetting effect. That's what we're getting for the bottom two thirds of this. And again, I'm going to be skewing the velocity profile, not getting the correct accuracy. That's, that's probably a low disturbance. Let's take a look at a, a medium disturbance. If you put a contraction right, right before a meter, this can cause a medium disturbance. I want you to know that if you have a larger pipe and you need to put in a smaller meter, you can do that. You're supposed to do that if it fits the application, right? It's okay to downsize a meter. You just need to put enough straight pipe in front of the meter and away from this contractor. This could skew my velocity profile maybe two and a half or three percent, plus or minus, right? This is the same kind of effect of the maybe the Y's or elbows or, you know, in this case, eccentric reducer. What it's going to do that for that velocity profile here is it's going to give me sort of two eddy currents now towards the top and towards the bottom because of this contraction, right? And then that jetting effect towards the middle. It's not what we're looking for. The last application that we'll talk about is something that's sort of near and dear to my heart. I always say this to utilities. I always ask the question, do you have a strainer installed before your turbine or compound meter? You should always have one. A rock coming down the pipe will ruin a turbine element, right? It doesn't have a, a strainer itself right before that. Strainers are great, but when you have a strainer in place, the other question I always love to ask utilities is, do you have a strainer cleaning maintenance program? Do you know how many utilities I've had answer yes to that question? Over the years, I've asked that probably 200 times. I think I've only had one or two utilities says, yep, we regularly do that. Now I'll give you a piece of advice that I got this from a customer one time. It was the greatest piece of advice that I could pass out to someone related to strainer maintenance. Think about the normal installation of a strainer. In the case of a strainer, most people put the opening of the strainer towards the top right? It would just seem natural that you would do that. You remove the bolts and you, you open it up and then you look down in the strainer. A customer told me we don't put our strainers in that way. We actually put our strainers in on the side where the opening is on the side of the strainer. Now, what does that do for you? It means that I can remove those four bolts, right? And I can easily scrape out any debris right out, you know, from the strainer versus having to pull it out. It makes your strainer maintenance program that you're going to put in place after you've listened to this, it makes it much easier. So that's just a, a, a bit of advice to you. Here's my problem with strainers. My problem with strainers are that people don't clean them. And what happens when I have a strainer that has buildup of debris is I get this jetting effect. I get this highly disturbed velocity profile that's jetting towards the top that's going to prematurely wear out your element. Again, maybe affecting your accuracy plus or minus 5%. So my hope is that you, know, you start to see some of the things that we talked about here, and we're going to go over in our next lesson, we're going to talk about installation particulars, but, but here understanding how a turbine element works will help you understand why you need to install it a certain way. 